welcome to the show. I'm your host, Mavis Robinson, and today I'm joined by Larry Weston. Larry, thanks for being here today. Nice to be here, Mavis. Thanks so much for coming in. Larry is, uh, is I hear, sort of the local expert on uh, Buzzards Bay, as uh, he grew up in Buzzards Bay and knows a lot about it. And you even brought a picture with you today of, uh, of what old Buzzards Bay looked like back in the day. Let's, that, let's get correct. a little of your background first. Were you, did you grow up in Bourne all your life? I grew up in Buzzards Bay uh, when it was a quiet little village, but actually busy, bustling Buzzards Bay as I know it. And yeah, I grew up in uh, Buzzards Bay my whole life, and uh, I've traveled around the world quite a bit, but uh, Buzzards Bay has always been home. Yeah, yeah. So you were, you were born and born, one of those born right. and borns. And, uh, and, and what, what, how is the town different when, um, when, you know, when you first, the, the picture that you brought today, which, uh, which we'll show here on the screen, it, it shows, a, shows a lot of railroad cars, um, and it shows like a real separation um, sort of of the town from the canal. What was that? Well, uh, th th that picture will de depict uh, the Buzzards Bay I remember because uh, a lot of people go through Buzzards Bay and of course it's disgusting now and dilapidated the buildings, but uh, they'll, people wonder why Buzzards Bay main streets on one side of the, one side of the road. And uh, I brought the picture to show that Buzzards Bay was a, a huge railroad center uh, switching station, rail yard. Uh, when I was a kid, the trains would come from Boston, New York, Fall River. Yeah. And when they got to Buzzards Bay, uh, they would switch a train, make the trains up. One would go to Falmouth and Woods Hole. Okay. The, and one would go to Hyannis and Provincetown. Okay. So the New York passengers and the Boston passengers, whoever was going to Woods Hole, they'd have to hang around while they made up the train for Woods Hole. Yep. Or the train for Hyannis. Yep. We'd take advantage of it as kids. I was just, uh, I remember this distinctly. I was just a little kid. I was the youngest of four boys. And uh, we would hop on the trains, steam engines, steam coming up with our shoeshine kits. Oh, okay. And all the rich people from New York, and there was a lot of them in Boston, yeah. we'd go in there with our shoeshine kits and make some money. Oh, wow. And wow. Uh, uh, we had maybe, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes while they were making up the trains. Yeah. But Buzzards Bay was only one side of the street because of, when you see this picture, you'll see it was a rail yard, a switching yeah, yard. Yeah. And uh, we used to know every train schedule, and and uh, we used to use the railroad bridge to get to the kids in Bourne Village and Monument Beach. Yeah, you got to tell me. I've heard that story a couple times, but you have to tell me the details of that. I don't understand well, how that works. <laughs> the, of course, we had trains. Yeah. Would run from Boston. To the Cape and New York to the Cape. Okay. And so Buzzards Bay was a busy place with with trains. Yeah. And we knew the schedule, so that when the railroad bridge came down, as you know it today, it's got a, a, a sidewalk on it, a metal graded okay. sidewalk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we used to ride our bikes across, and we used to run across, okay. walk across. Okay. And the kids, the guys in the tower would yell at us, you kids, get out of here, don't go, go across. But we knew the schedule, so we knew the bridge would be down for 15 or 20 minutes. Right. So instead of having to go over the Bourne Bridge with our bikes to play the kids in Bourne and Monument Beach for football or uh, baseball, whatever it might have been, yeah. and we did a lot of that, yeah. we'd use the railroad bridge. And it po popped you right into Bourne Village and you didn't yeah. have to worry and, about and, it. And when we skipped school at, <laughs> at, over in Bourne, you know, grammar school and high school, We'd use the railroad bridge. Right, right, right. Mothers and fathers couldn't see us because we'd come across the railroad bridge uh, walking right. into Buzzards Bay and we'd be home. Right. If you walked so, over the Bourne Bridge, someone would spot you because yeah, they'd exactly, be driving over. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So anybody growing up in Buzzards Bay, as I did, we knew the schedule. Yeah. We knew when the bridge would be down, going up. Uh, in fact, I ran into Paul Gerard, who I understand you interviewed. Yep. I ran, ran into him at the uh, police auction the other day on Main Street in Buzzards Bay. And, I hadn't seen him in a few years. He reminded me when, and he said, "Hey, do you, you know I was on TV and I mentioned you?" I said, "Oh God, Paul." He <laughs> said, "The Winter Wilson having a Wildcats and stuff." And then he reminded me of the story, and I'd have never forgotten it. How his brothers, uh, Barry, and my brothers, we were headed to Moyer Beach to play baseball, mm -hmm. and uh, we were walking, and the bridge started going up because we were we were lingering on the bridge. Yeah. And we heard the horn, and so my brothers all ran ahead of me and got off, and the bridge started going up. Wow. <laughs> and to this day, I mean, it's indelibly in my mind. The bridge started going up, and my brothers and, and Paul's brother yelling, jump, you guys, jump. 
So we ran and we jumped and we made it to the section that doesn't go off. But yeah. in the meantime, I had a quarter in my pocket in this top pocket here and yeah. it flew out into the canal. And the reason I think quarter was big money right, back in those right, days, you right, know? Yeah, yeah. So anyways, that that's why I brought the book and the picture because Buzzers Bay was a one sided town and the reason being the railroads. Yeah, yeah. It was fascinating. And it's you know, it's interesting that, that photo showing all those cars lined up, now that's a park. That's that Buzzards yeah, Bay that's park right, with that's the gazebo. Right, that's right. So in and, and, and was the canal used in the same recreational way that it's used now back when you were a kid? No, you'd ride your bike along there and stuff. Yeah. But, but uh, the, was it mostly was it kids using yeah, it? Yeah, with or? the rail yard, we started to stay out of there with your bikes because you'd get hung up. There were so many tracks. Yeah. To try and get your bike bumping oh, over. Oh all yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. Terrible. You yeah. had to avoid that. But uh, well, Buzzers Bay is much different because the uh, the Taylor's Point is all mass maritime now. But when I was a kid, in fact, the there was a bridge that went over the little marina where the marina is out and it was a dirt road down to the Mass Maritime Academy or okay. the State Pier. We yeah. call it the State Pier. And anybody that wants to know what I'm talking about, when you come into Buzzers Bay from Wayham, yep. just when you get into the Rotary Circle, on the right hand side there's some signs uh, just before you get it by Delcy's gas station on the right and you'll see the old bridge abutment. Oh really? The old bridge that we used to ride our bikes over yeah. to go down to the, Mass, to the State Pier because the State Pier well, it's a dirt road, and it was maybe the big Taylor's, uh, Taylor's Point, the Taylor House. I think they own the Boston Globe, but there was a. Uh, we used to go down there fishing and fish off the State Pier that we were allowed to, and there was a little ice cream hot dog stand at the end. But it was all a dirt road. Wow. Very wow. few houses. Yeah. Uh, but that that bridge abutment's still there. Yeah, I'll have to check that out yeah. next time I. Yeah, uh, yeah it's I head still over there. Buzzards Bay. Yeah. And. Uh, now, how uh, close did you live to that area, to Taylor's Point? I, 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 well, I lived on Wilson Avenue, which in this picture, it shows a lot of the, the streets before the bypass was put in yeah. all, all came to Main Street. Yep. And then when I was, I well, don't That's know, really striking, seeing those straight streets just yeah, go all the way yeah. right to Main Street. Yeah. Well, I remember, I can't, I think I might have been 10, 11, 12 when they put the bypass in. Yeah. And in that area uh, where the... Uh, Liberty Bond liquor store it used to be the first national. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all hills, oh, uh, wow. and there was a little uh, kettle pond in in where the Liberty is. There we used to have forts through there. Wow! Uh, it was all uh, trees and woods and hills. Could you uh, would you swim? I mean, oh, it was no, a nice... no, no. It was just a little kettle okay, pond. Okay. But we'd ride our bikes through there. Yeah. And we knew the whole area. But that was all woods. Buzzards Bay. Before the bypass, uh, and this picture kind of shows it, it, was all woods. I used to take my 22 and uh, leave my house in the, in the fall, and, and I could walk with my 22 down Wilson Avenue into the woods to the Riser Estate and hunt wow. all the way to the water. Wow. And nobody bothered you. That's how it was, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a different era. I see these kids now, uh, you know, looking at their phones and stuff, and yeah. I'm saying, my goodness, we. We had so much going on. I, I remember, I could tell you stories about Rocky Marciano, yeah. uh, Tiny Jim, who was his brother-in-law, and coming down to the ball field in the back of the community building and taking us for ice cream. Yeah, this is my, my co-host, yeah. Captain. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, Buzzard Bay uh, was, you know, it, it was uh, the busiest place during World War II because yeah. Camp Edwards uh, was you know, training all the GIs, and they even had German prisoners out there. Oh, wow, my, I didn't know that. Yeah, and my mother worked at the USO, mm -hmm. which is now the Bourne Community Building. But yeah. the USO was home to us kids in Buzzers Bay. It yeah. was the home. I mean, we played baseball in back of it, and in the winter and the fall, U USO was uh, basketball. In fact, Bourne High School went to the state championship. My brother Charlie, God rest his soul, Eddie Savage, Wayne Upton, Rodney Valentini, they're mm -hmm. all dead now. They were a couple of years older than me, yeah. but they went to the state championship. And the reason being is the USO, we call it the U, everybody from Sagamore, Monument Beach, Bobby Driscoll, uh, everybody played basketball at the USO. Yeah. And Bourne was always good in basketball because that was the place to play. And and uh, uh, and that's all kids. Kids didn't have phones. And uh, I mean, right. we played every, whatever the sport was basketball, football, baseball, we played it. Yeah. And we played against the kids from Monument Beach and Bourne by using the railroad bridge and they'd 
they they were kind of they never usually came across. I don't know why. Maybe the parents didn't let them. They, they weren't as wild as the kids in Buzz. Buzz Bay kids <laughs> were wild and tough, but. Uh, 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 well, it, it was. It, it feels a little bit more like uh, I don't want to say a city because it was really a small town. But it, you know, you had more stores, more things to do. The movie theater was there, so it's sort of a, a more bustling area. Buzzers Bay had a lot of stores yeah. and a lot of bar rooms. A lot of bar rooms. Okay. <laughs> because of World War II and the soldiers yeah. that would come into Buzzers Bay into town, that was their place to unwind. In fact, I can start and name you all the, as I remember, all the bar rooms. Uh, restaurants and all the stores and I'll start it where the Bourne Mill was now it's the Esso station okay the Bourne Mill had a windmill on it yeah all right yeah and when that burned down Johnny Butler God rest his soul he's dead now uh, and he worked at tiny gyms for tiny him Johnny and I went into the Bourne Mill trying to steal beer you know, oh, with burned you. And we had we drank smoky beer for a long time all right smoky but, beer yeah well Is that from a the fire from the oh, fire smoky beer. <laughs> I see. <laughs> but anyways, we uh, you had the board mill, and then you had across the rotary circle was Tiny Jim's. Okay, and Tiny Jim's, I mean, that comes up a lot. Right. That Tiny must have been Jim a classic. Was a, uh, he was probably three times the size of me. Okay, okay? so he's tiny. And tiny uh, Johnny Butler, my best friend, God rest his soul. He, he used to work for Tiny, and Tiny used to take Johnny and I into the North End in Boston to uh, pick up you know, bread in the North End, yeah. supplies. You know, it was an Italian restaurant. Yeah. And they made great pizzas. Uh, Leo Aschenball uh, was the pizza maker there at night. And uh, Tiny's brother-in-law was Rocky Marciano. Oh, wow. When Rocky was, was uh, heavyweight champ. Yeah, yeah. And Rocky uh, used to have a Cadillac convertible. And I remember we were playing baseball in back of the USO, U, the U, in a dirt field. Now it's softball feel and stuff but Rocky used to pick us up and hey you kids we didn't have any money we were poor he'd take us out for ice cream and, in his car Rocky and did you Marcia. know who he was at the time oh yeah oh, every, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. Wow. oh sure wow. yeah 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 we knew that yeah in fact I have another story diverging I'm probably one of the only people have, that I used to have ice cream Rocky would take us for ice cream when we were kids Jack Dempsey, these are the greatest heavyweight champions. Jack Dempsey, I was in New York City because you could drink when you're 18. I used to go down there because the girls that we grew up with, Sagamore, Cecilia Gallo and Paula Addy, they became airline stewardesses at mm -hmm. Pan Am when Pan Am was the number one. Yeah. So Dave Ashenball and I used to go down to New York all the time. They lived in Queens. Well, one time, my, my stepfather, God rest his soul, he was a big boxing fan. And he said, you gotta to, got to go to Jack Dempsey. So I went into Jack Dempsey's one night by myself. I was like, I had two bucks in my thing. And I, I, I went in, the bartender said, uh, and it was right on Broadway. And the bartender says, what would you like? I said, I'd like a beer, because I just turned 18. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a beer, right? And it was about 9.30 or so. And uh, Jack Dempsey came out from the back of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And he said, son, have you eaten tonight? I said, no. He said, come back to my table. And Jack Dempsey and I had dinner in his restaurant. True story. And I went back a couple of times and, and we had it off so well that he, I had dinner with Jack. I had it three times with Jack Dempsey wow. in the question. So I met Jack Dempsey, I met Rocky Marciano. He, so he just pulled, he, you were just a random kid. He didn't it know you. There was nobody hardly in the bar. And he yeah. came up and he said, son, have you had dinner tonight? I said, yeah. no, maybe I look poor, you know? <laughs> but in any case, uh, the next time I was in Puerto Rico at a baseball game in the winter and I was probably, I don't know, 17 or 18. I did a lot of traveling. But there was no war on then. Mm -hmm. And uh, they announced Joe, Nitt, Joe, Joe Lewis was in the stadium. Uh -huh. I looked up Joe Lewis. I'm on the end seat. He's sitting, standing next to me. Oh, wow. So I jumped up and shook his hand, all right? Wow. So now I got oh, Dempsey, Marciano, and Lewis. Right. 1986, I was on my way to Maui, Hawaii. And we had a layover in Los Angeles. So my wife says to me, hey, hey, who's that guy? Who's that guy? So what are you talking about? She's that, that fighter. It was Muhammad Ali walking oh, wow. through with an entourage, and he yeah. just got started getting Parkinson's. Yep. And my, my wife's cousin, Glenn, jumped up, come on, let's go get his autograph. His, you know, shake his hand. So we followed him down there, and we got to shake his hand. Wow, wow. So I, I don't know many you people. You collected fighters. The well, I don't life. have any autographs, but I've shaken the hand of yeah. the four greatest champions that ever lived. But that's a diversion. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's, that's a, a really diversion. cool story. But Marciano was, uh, he was something. Yeah. I have to say, like saying that you were like 18 years old in New York and in Puerto Rico, I mean, how does a kid from Bourne do that kind of travel? Well, like, I, I was a, 
uh, went on chips and things like that. All right, yeah. all right. The canal was like a magnet. Yeah. 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 I spent my some of my youth in South America and Rio de Janeiro and hired to to work on yeah, ships. The, or? Yeah, that's when we had a merchant fleet when there was the more more lines. When you know everything you see now is out of Panama, but if the old days when you went down to New York on the East River where all the luxury liners before mm -hmm. jets. Yeah. And uh, everybody traveled by cruise boat. And the United States had a, uh, a hell of a uh, uh, maritime service. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of a lot of companies were in it. So being living on the on the end of canal and uh, you know where are those ships going. Right. It's right. Like, a, like I said, may, may, it's a it's a magnet. It a yeah. Magnet. Yeah. So what kind of background do you need to hop on a ship and, and work as an 18-year-old? Just go to uh, uh, the International Seafarer School, you know, uh -huh. you know, you get in the union, that's what it was. Nas yeah. I was in the National Maritime Union and the International Seafarers Union. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, in fact, I paid my way through college on a ship working out of Woods Hole for the government on the NOAA research vessel Albatross 4. Oh, wow. That's when I met my wife, but I paid my way through college going, yeah. working on the, uh, the research vessel, uh, uh, the Albatross 4. And, was she uh, also working on that no, vessel? No, 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 no. I met my wife on a blind date. Oh, really? <laughs> but, but in any case, 50 years Seems later. Seems like it worked out. In fact, uh, this <laughs> Memorial Day weekend, we had met 50 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. You know, on yeah. a blind date. So yeah. that's another and story. She's from Bourne also? Sagamore Beach. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, I have to tell this story that, uh, I, you know, I didn't have a car. I, I only get my license until I was 18, but my point of the story is uh, James J. Dugan, the great bartender of Buzzards Bay, uh, he was a great guy. I remember one night Brenda let me off about 2 o'clock in the morning, right, because she had a car and she was a working girl and blah, 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 and I was just a guy working out of Woods Hole. <laughs> so in the morning, James J. Dugan says to me, hey, Larry, he says, uh, who's that blonde that let you off last night? Because mm -hmm. summer night, right? Yeah. I said, some girl named Ellis from Sagamore Beach. Ellis, Ellis, fireman, fireman. I said, yeah. I says, her father's a fire chief at Fort Devens, and mm -hmm. her uncle's on the fire department, and if they see this, they're going to probably get mad at me, right? <laughs> but I says, how do you know Jimmy? Because Jimmy was a bartender on Main Street. Yeah. And I said, how do you know? They don't drink, Jimmy. None of them drink. He says, Shag, don't let them fool you. I won't use the words he says, but Shag, that was my nickname. Don't let them fool you. They all come through the back door every now and then. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't drink at home or in public. Right. But he right, said they right. all come. They and all there, come. And there was a back door to the Bay Cafe that you yeah. could go in and get a quick beer and go out. No one would see you. But he says, don't let them fool you. Shag. Now was he, that like the local bar? I mean, that's well, the, uh, it's closed down. See, I started by telling you the bar rooms in Buzzers yeah. Bay. There was, we left off at Tiny Jim's, but there was, uh, it, it coming up the street, the, of course the Mezzaluna's always been there, but yep. across the street from the Mezzaluna, where the Buzzers Bay House of Pizza is now, and the, there's a gun shop, there was those stores in there, there was a place called the Ranch House. Okay. Okay, that was a bar room. Yeah. Novak's owned it, and they owned the Buttermilk Bay Inn. They were kind of a rich family, but it was called uh, the Ranch House. And then just beyond that, where the real estate office is on Bourne Pond, back of the town hall mm -hmm. on Main Street, was a uh, real estate called Peggy's on the Pond. Oh, yeah. That was another bar room. I've heard of that place. Yeah, yeah. that was another yeah. bar room, all right? Now, are they restaurants or strictly bar rooms? Uh, uh, ranch House was a bar room. Yeah. Uh, Peggy's on the Pond was classified as a bar room. Mm -hmm. You moved up a little further. Where the animal hospital is now, what's the Blue Moon? Okay. Yeah. And the Blue Moon, when I was a kid, we'd sit outside and it was dancing under the stars. Oh, wow. It was a beautiful place. Wow. Beautiful place. Uh, what kind of music did they play? Band music. Yeah. yeah. Like they, I, can't like, think, I didn't know Bornhurst. That had burned down. Yeah. But Blue Moon became like the Bornhurst. It was outdoor ocean, yeah. outdoor, outside dancing yeah. in the summer. And uh, later on, a guy named Alex Byron owned it. And I was a real good friend of his. I helped him run his campaign. And uh, when he ran for Congress, but he made it into the, I can't think of the name of Shea something, but the Byron family owned all that land, mm -hmm. and Alex owned that. And uh, he took a girl from where Mako's was, Lori DeMello, I think her name was, and she was a very bosom lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he took her out of the uh, a helicopter, out of Mako's, out of the water between the bridges, and flew her down Main Street, okay? <laughs> and. And her name, her billing was Leave It to Lori, and he put her in a fish tank as a mermaid inside that place. 
and she'd sing at night. But right. She, but she was inside the, wait, the wait, tank. In a helicopter? Yeah. I, yeah, I don't even yeah. understand how that would work. <laughs> he flew her down Main Street in a helicopter to, to get her into the uh, the tank there, which is a stunt. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, but Alex was quite a guy. That's incredible. Moving <laughs> on from the animal hospital, right next door was a roller skating rink. Okay. And we used to roller skate there, and in the summer, they used to have dances there. Dave Maynard used to be on BZ. We used to go there all the time because on Friday nights, all the summer girls would come down. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yep. That was a so big new, place new faces. To, to hook up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just beyond that, and people don't even remember this, this was uh, right where the post office is now, uh, was called Elma's Driving Range. It was a, okay. it was a golf, golf driving range. Yeah. And it was like a car hop place. Yeah. And there were no woods, so you could drive balls right into the try to get them to the canal, yeah, okay? Yeah. It was all open and level. And just next to that was the greatest bar, one of the greatest bar rooms we'll call the Red Fox. Okay. And that burned down. Red Fox, I Red mean, Fox. No, no tie to Red Fox the comedian. Just no, a, okay, it was, yeah. it was Red Fox, and the group that played there was the Eddie Stack Trio. Uh -huh. A black guy that played the saxophone, that was Eddie Stack, and uh, the clarinet, all the music, and, and there was a, a, a guy on bass, another black guy on bass, and the, and, and, and the b drummer was a guy named Freddie Buddha. And the reason I know this, that jazz music was great. And that place, say about midnight, everybody would come out of Onset, Wayham, place was packed with black people, white people, no yeah. fights, it was yeah. a great place. And I used to sit out back, because I was just a kid. Right, right. And I'd, I'd listen to the music. And Freddie Buddha, the drummer, used to come out the reason I mention him is he turned out being the Boston Pops drummer oh, wow. for probably 30 years. He probably retired just a few years ago. Wow, wow. Yeah, he was a great drummer. Yeah. Great. Uh, was, Eddie Stack Trio was great, and, and the Red Fox was a great place to be. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, and in fact, uh, a lot of stories with that I could say that I know about what happened. Tell, uh, me, tell, me, tell me one good story that, that other people well, might not know. Gene Sweeney who was an All-American at the University of Pennsylvania. I grew up with his kids, Jack and Gene Jr. and Michael, uh, and uh, they lived up off of Puritan Road. And Gene had a uh, appliance store next to the, next to the uh, movie theater. Okay. And uh, he was in there drinking quite a bit. And Drinking he, in the store? Yeah. He, okay. I don't know if I should tell this story. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> but Father O'Brien was the priest at the Buzz, you know, the Catholic yeah, Church in Buzz yeah. Bay at St. Margaret's. Yeah. For years, uh, Father O'Brien had his pews, the good pews, stored in Gene's warehouses up in the uh, off Puritan Road in yeah. the Yeah. And he told Father O'Brien he ought to move them. Yeah. He ought to move them. So they did. He couldn't understand it. Well, Gene was in the Red Fox drinking. And he said, "I think there's going to be a fire tonight." Oh. Really, really, you were really gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there was a big fire, uh -huh. and uh, the warehouse had all these appliances. Okay? Oh, wow. And they went up in smoke. Right. But Gene was cool because he used to be in Vegas all the time, and Jack and I would pick him up, uh, Jack Sweeney's son, my age, we'd pick him up at Logan. He'd fly in from Vegas yeah. and be at the Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis, when the Rat Pack. Yeah, I yeah. I don't know if Gene was part of it, but he was right. always being out there. But he was quite a character. Yeah. Well, I have to say that your description of like the you know downtown being hopping and jazz bands it it, rem it, oh, it, it was. makes it feel like that type of a you know was. culture was going on in Buzzards M Bay. Moving a little further down the street towards uh, uh, where the Cumberland Farms is today mm -hmm. was a place called Club Domino and Gladys Diner. Yeah. And they used to have the platters come in there and oh, uh, wow. you know, different groups yeah. would play in the Club Domino. That burned down. And Gladys's diner was part of it. And then across the street where the Buzz Bay Tavern is now, that became a donut shop, Ma's, Ma's Donut Shop. But I remember be Ma's Donuts. But before <laughs> the donut shop was called Joe Hicks's Bar. Okay. And Johnny Dugan, his father was bartender, one of the places Jimmy was bartender. Johnny and I used to go in there on Sundays after uh, Friday and Saturday night, clean the place up, find all kinds of change in the seats. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, that was our money till, right? Right, right. Pocket and, money. Uh, but Joe Hicks, I remember 1953, he had the first Corvette it was ever made in 53, and he had one. Oh, wow. And he was driving around Main Street. It was really cool. Yeah. Uh, for, going further up the street, uh, and I may miss some, there was. Uh, 
well, the best bar that I ever was in was the uh, Oyster House bar, the original one. It was okay. next to the theater. Next to the theater. Yeah, okay. next to the theater. It was a horseshoe bar. Yeah. And off the side, off the alleyway, the street that ran between the theater and Oyster Bar was a screen door with a pool table, and it was a horseshoe bar. And uh, attached to that was Gates's Package Store. The Gates's were an old couple that were in vaudeville. Mm -hmm. And now remember, I was just a kid. Yeah. But they were a cool couple. They were nice people when I went in. Because the reason I bring them up is that nobody looked at IDs. We'd go in there at 16 or 17 and buy a six pack. Yeah, yeah. Right? And the old couple <laughs> needed the money, so. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, the Oyster Bar, and I didn't ever see this, but Tom McDonough ran it. But it was a great, great bar. Uh, and Johansson took it over and, and took out the horseshoe bar and made it one way, and I never liked it after that. Yeah. But the point is, uh, Tom McDonough had the pictures and had the proof, and he used to tell me how John Kennedy, when he was senator, President Kennedy used to come in there from Boston oh, on wow. his way to Hyannis and drink and drink. Wow. <laughs> and Tom knew him, though. Yeah. And he had pictures of Kennedy. In yeah. the, I don't know what ever happened to those pictures and stuff. Maybe his sister Mary got them, but... Wow. I was reading a book one time because JFK was kind of my idol, and uh, it, it talked about how Jackie said she had to go from Hyannis to Buzz's Bay one night to pick up <laughs> her husband at right. the Oyster Bar in Buzz's Bay because he wouldn't come home. Yeah, yeah. And something worse to that <laughs> yeah, effect. So, yeah, yeah. Wow, and so the story's next, true. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. next to, uh, yeah, because uh, he, he, Tom had the pictures to show it. A yeah. lot of politicians stopped in there. Yeah. Uh, Mayor, not Mayor Flynn, but. Uh, the cripple mayor, I'm trying to think, uh, but uh, I can't think of his name now, but summer nights in Buzz's Bay, the Buzz, the theater was it. Yes. I mean, people would come from all over because there weren't many theaters. And they used to have some benches outside. So I was a people watcher. And I remember uh, Bobby Johnson, he had a bike shop down the end of the main street. And he, he I don't know what affliction he had, but people could hardly understand him, but I used to, talk with Bobby and I really got to know in fact he used to sell eggs and he used to come to my mother's house selling eggs mm -hmm. and he'd come in the yard and he, he was crippled up and he, he'd break a dozen eggs before he got to the house so yeah, my mother used yeah. to send me out when she saw Bobby coming he had a, a bike and the eggs uh, as part of it and in, in the side of the, the uh, bike and uh, I'd go out and get by my dozen eggs, whatever my mother wanted. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I could really understand Bobby. And he used to come down and he used to sit on his bike and we'd watch people, right? And uh, his number plate was a 708. So us kids in Buzz's Bay would say, here comes the 708. Uh -huh. Everybody knew it was Bobby Johnson <laughs> on his bike, you know? <laughs> I miss Bobby. He, uh, but everybody would, a lot of people made fun of him, but he was a great guy. He was yeah. smart too. Yeah. So moving on from the, summer nights watching people uh, go into the theater. A lot of politicians came there. Uh, right next door was a place called Carri Carri Lake. The Carol Lake family owned it. And it was like a, a produce mm -hmm. uh, store and, it was a con and they sold fraps. It had a, a soda fountain in there. And that became, the Wagners bought it. The Wagner family bought it. It became a bar room later on. And uh, now it's a uh, eyeglass shop. Yeah, yeah. And next to that was Baker's, Baker's Five and Dime. Yeah. And uh, that had uh, a, 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 what was it, I'm trying to, peanut a roasting machine. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So we'd go. You could and, smell and, the peanuts. Yeah, and of course, <laughs> Buzzers Bay was a big place in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, you go to the theater and we'd run there first to get Mr. Baker to, to roast us up some yeah, peanuts. And yeah. I remember he knew we were poor, my, my brothers and I. So he'd give us a few extra peanuts and yeah. roast them. He was a nice guy. <laughs> but he had a five and dime store. It was a big store, had all kinds of things you could buy, novelties, yeah. it had everything in it. Uh, and I have to back up. Well, actually, before you back uh, up, I think we're going to have to do a part two because, oh, believe it or not, our half hour is really? over. Yeah, yeah. I did all the so, talking. So we're stopping at Baker's, but I really want to have oh, you back right, to, right. uh, to okay. talk more. And, uh, and I hope you folks will join us again as we, uh, as we take this, this glimpse through the, uh, the window. Did we ever show the past. picture? And we showed the picture. Oh, we did. Okay. And, uh, and you right. were fantastic. Thank all you right. so much for joining me. So, and thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs>